I spent a lot of years covering New Jersey politics from my home here in Hoboken. This town feeds one of my other passions, great food. I've always been fascinated by political deals and cooking great meals. So I figured, why not combine them? Funding for Pasta and Politics with Nick Acachella, provided by Gibbons PC, with 220 attorneys in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. O'Toole, Fernandez, Weiner, Van Lu, LLC, Attorneys at Law. NJM Insurance Group, grown in the Garden State, and proudly serving New Jersey's businesses and citizens for more than 100 years. Fairview Insurance Agency, a family-owned and operated insurance agency with locations in Verona and Cherry Hill. And by CarePoint Health, with Bayonne Medical Center, Hoboken University Medical Center, and Christ Hospital, a fully integrated health system of physician practices and neighborhood health centers. Take the tomatoes and just- A career prosecutor at both the state and federal level, Kim Guadagno was elected Monmouth County Sheriff in 2007. Two years later, Chris Christie picked her to be his running mate. We'll talk about food Irish. and family. So cooking for an Irish family is a little different than cooking for an Italian family? Meat uh, and potatoes. Meat, meat and potatoes. potatoes. And right. on Fridays right. it was, uh, you know, fish sticks. And what it's like to be the first lieutenant governor of New Jersey. I describe it like this. If the governor's out of state, I do three jobs and get one salary. I'm the acting <laughs> governor. It's good you got that joke. So let's get cooking. Welcome to Pasta and Politics with Nick Acachella. Our guest today is the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of New Jersey, Kim Guadagno. Welcome. Thank We're you, gonna Nick. We're going to have some fun. We are. The Lieutenant Governor has insisted that we cook with all ingredients that can be grown in New Jersey. And it wasn't even a challenge. No, it because wasn't. Because we grow everything here. Jersey fresh. All, all, all Jersey fresh. That's Before we get started, your backstory. You're not originally in New Jersey. No, no, no. I was born in Iowa and moved all around the country for 25 years. My dad was in television, oh, which oh, is appropriate, okay, right? Okay. So Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Connecticut, New York, Indiana again, Ohio again, um, Pennsylvania a couple times. What got you here? My husband. Oh, okay. My husband and I worked together in the Organized Crime and Racketeering Strike uh. Force in Brooklyn. We were federal prosecutors. He was uh, trying a case. We tried the case together. We got to know each other very well, and a couple of years later, we got married. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have a family, so we moved to the District wow. of New Jersey. My husband was in frauds. I was in political corruption, and we did political corruption cases, or I did political corruption cases for a couple of years. When you were, when you were growing up in 30 different places, yeah. who cooked in your house? My mom. Your mother. My your mom. Mother. Well, y you know, you have to, you know, I'm... I'm an Irishman, yeah. so yeah. I, I was smart enough to marry an Italian, Social lucky climbing. enough, Social <laughs> climbing. Lucky enough mm -hmm. to be born Irish. So cooking for an Irish family is a little different than cooking for an Italian family. You know that. Yeah, right? well, my, my best friend growing up was, was, was Irish, and we'd eat dinner at his house early just to fill up and then go to my mother's <laughs> house for the, for the good stuff. Meat uh, and potatoes. Meat and potatoes, potatoes right, and on Fridays right. it was, uh, you know, fish sticks or yeah, tuna, right, right, or right, tuna right. casserole. But right. your husband's a cook. My husband is the cook in my family, yeah. Should we get started? Yes, we Let's should. Let's do a couple of things. Let's take the peppers. Now, my husband would yell at me right now because he would say, you know how to do this, I taught you how to do well, this. Well, then why don't you do that one? All right, there you go. He taught you how to do this. He did. He had to because, you know, meat and potatoes, you just throw it in a pot and you're done. Because my mom had five kids growing up, so. I have three kids, three boys. I, I like to say God never gives you more than you can handle, so I had boys. Well, three is a lot when there are only two parents. You know, when you're outnumbered, <laughs> you it starts to get dangerous. All right, not as good as yours, but you're faster. All right, than that's it. good. That's you good. You want it diced? Let's dice it. Yeah, a bite-sized chunk. All I right. want to make all of this bite-sized, right. same size as the pasta we're going to cook. Let's take the onion, just like this. About that thing. See now, you, you do it that way. When I was at How camp, you, you know, you used to we used to go like oh, that. Oh yeah, I know, like I know. You we're not fancy. I am not a chef. I'm a cook. <laughs> There's a big difference. But I'm the sous chef in my house. Well, you're if the I don't sous do it cook. right, I have to do, do it. Do it the way you do it. No, no, no. I'll do it this way. 
Let's take the zucchini next. Go, go ahead. I'll yeah, get the zucchini. Yeah, this is ahead. my job. That's your job. Go okay, ahead. what are we doing? Why don't we cut it in half and then make half circles? Then we got a squash. We're going to do the same thing to it. These we should quarter. Okay. Oh, that's... Let's take the tomatoes and just cut them in half. How can you just take a tomato and not pop one in your mouth? Uh, Man, that's good. You went from, from being a federal prosecutor to being a state prosecutor. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? I uh, got a chance to run the statewide prosecutions for oh, the state oh, of New Jersey. Okay. Under which governor? So, under, under, uh, governor Whitman. Under Whitman. And oh, then well, you decided, one day you decided to run for sheriff. Well, there was a lot in between. 2001, my third child came home. He's adopted, it's not mm -hmm. a big secret. And so I decided it was time to go home and take care of the kids. I had three then, oh, three okay. of them so were all hiatus. little, little ones. And I started to practice a little as a defense attorney at home. I got a job teaching at law school at Rutgers at night and got involved in my town. And <sighs> once I got involved in my town, Monmouth Beach? Monmouth, Monmouth Beach, Beach, a little tiny town in Mon uh, Monmouth yeah. Beach. It's uh, got about 1,800 registered voters on a sunny day in the summertime. So it was a really small town, one mile square, but got involved, ran for commissioner, um, became the commissioner of public works. I was the trash collector. So got involved and then became, got a chance to be sheriff. Now when you're... No, 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 you don't just get a chance to be sheriff. What happened was um, then U.S. Attorney Christie had some public corruption cases yes, right. in Monmouth County. Right that were notorious, um, and they were looking for a different kind of candidate, I think the Republican Party was. And you oh, can't get much sense. more okay. different than that a female mm -hmm. re former corruption prosecutor for sheriff. I had some sense of politics, but you know, until 2005, I didn't, I didn't run, did run it, on a campaign. It, it I didn't write a political you'd never, check. You'd never been involved in a campaign? Well, no, I was a public corruption prosecutor. Right. Right. I, mean, I mean, I was a target of opportunity. Every time mm -hmm. I saw a politician, I was thinking, you know, how do I prosecute how for How long something? were you on the, the, the municipal commission? Two years, 2005 to 2007. Oh, okay. That brings us to your current job. You are the first lieutenant governor in the history of New Jersey. We've never had, we may have had one in colonial times, I don't know. But certainly not under the 1947 Constitution. What's a lieutenant governor? What's the job description? Well, you know, in 2005, somebody voted. Yes. I hope I did not, but I, I think somebody voted yeah. to create the they office. Created, yeah. Now, see, I don't believe in creating offices, so I, I don't know that I would have voted for it, which I find kind of amusing standing here that where I am funny. right that now. That is funny. I will but, tell you I voted against it. Because of the bureaucracy yeah, it could create. More, yeah. yeah, it's not very Republican, yeah. as they say. But 2005, they voted to make the office effective 2009. And the, the legislation really doesn't say. Exactly. It doesn't it, say it what doesn't. it is. It could be anything. All it says is you cannot be the attorney general. So, uh, okay. but we had a little more guidance than that. The governor, when he announced that he was going to run for governor, said he wanted his lieutenant governor to be in charge of economic development, cutting through red tape, and frankly at that point that was when I knew I wasn't going to be the lieutenant governor because I was I didn't have any background in mm -hmm. economic development. Mm -hmm. But when uh, he asked me to join him, I said, you know, we were virtually dead last in every measure of economic success. We had nowhere to go but up, so why not try something different? So we did. We got a former federal prosecutor who used to be a sheriff to run economic development and and we were off to the races. But there's nothing in the law that says it has to be economic development or has to be secretary of state. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't would, say work. Would, would it work in you your You don't opinion? even have to come to work. Uh, exactly. And you don't even get paid. You know, that's the fun part about this job. I do not get paid. As there's no salary set aside for lieutenant governor. Oh, you only get paid as secretary of state. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that was a well, fundamental well, that's, flaw. Well, that's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, the husband liked that a lot. So Let's take the mushrooms and just okay. slice them in fourths. Okay. We'll do the garlic. This is why my husband has me as a sous chef, because he wants me to do the garlic, because he doesn't like to do it. He doesn't like the smell of the garlic yeah, on his fingers? He, he doesn't. Well, he claims he's too busy cooking. <laughs> he's a judge, right? He is a judge. He is uh, a judge. Superior court? In uh, appellate division appellate now. Appellate division? No, good. Yeah. Good. He was actually appointed by uh, then-Governor Cody. 
Let's take the peas and shell them. We got good fresh peas. I'm beginning to get hungry. So what does a lieutenant governor do? You've told us that by statute, not very much. We decided to put the lieutenant governor's office into something that did what the governor wanted it to do, which was economic development. And we looked around, literally walked around the state house and found the secretary of state's offices down the hall, right. take a left right. and a right from the governor's right. office. It runs arts, history, culture, and travel and tourism. Yes, it does. Travel and tourism, third largest industry in New Jersey. We said, oops, there's a match. Would it work, do you think, if it were some other cabinet post? It's going to depend a lot on what the governor, of course, whoever the governor yeah, right. is, wants, but also what the expertise of the, that person is. You're, there's only one office that you can be that is exempted by law from going to the Judiciary Committee for Advice and Consent, and that's the Secretary of State. Oh, I see, I yeah. see. So that makes sense. It does. So it, we became the Secretary of State. I didn't have to go to the Judiciary and get blessed by the right. judiciary like right. every other cabinet member. The Secretary of State does not need Senate confirmation? The Secretary of State needs Senate confirmation, but if you're the Lieutenant Governor oh, and the Secretary of State, okay, then you do okay. not need well, Senate we've, confirmation. We've really complicated this magnificently. Well, it is know, what it is. It's, it is. And, you know, every state does it a little differently. Yes. Some states still don't have a Lieutenant Governor. But Some states, the Lieutenant Governor is tremendously powerful. In Texas, yeah. runs the state Senate instead of this, you know, the way, the way the Senate president does he's here. In effect, yeah. In yeah. effect, he's the governor. Yeah. But in other states, you could be of different parties. Sure. They elect them separately. Yeah, yes. which is yes, awkward, indeed. I would think. I would think that's yeah. awkward. Yeah. You check every morning to see if the guy's still breathing. Let's get back to the cooking. About a third of a cup of olive oil. That's a third of a cup. We're going to blanch the broccoli. This is going to take two minutes. Why don't you cut that in half for me? This half? Squeeze this it, yeah. We're going to squeeze it into the uh, okay. concoction when it's ready. Tell me more about the lieutenant governor's role in this administration, because we, we've never had one. I describe it like this. If the governor's out of state, I do three jobs and get one salary. I'm the <laughs> acting governor. It's good you got that joke. The acting governor, the lieutenant governor, and the 33rd secretary of state. So. In the bucket of Secretary of State, Council on the Arts, History, Culture, the Board of Elections, Travel and Tourism, the State Museum, a number of different um, mm -hmm. programs like the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives, the Center for right. Hispanic, right. Those, those kinds of things. In the Lieutenant Governor's bucket is economic development. So I must have, in the last five years, visited visited hundreds I, of I see your schedule every day, and you have yeah. visited every meaningful company above the level of, of the, the mom and pop candy store. Well, and the, it's what and, you and don't see incredible. on my schedule. What you don't see on my schedule, like yesterday, I spent all day on the phone making what we call continuing mm -hmm. care calls. Sure, like, sure. how are you? Haven't spoken to you in two years. Are you having a tough time? Is there something we can help you with? And here's my cell phone number. Those are the kinds of touches that businesses need, I think, to feel comfortable that somebody in Trenton is fighting for them to help them grow in New Jersey. And sometimes that keeps companies here. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. So okay. my schedule, okay. the public schedule is very different than the private yeah. schedule. Okay. Pe the public schedule, I'll go out and talk to businesses publicly, but I don't want Pennsylvania and New York to know what companies I'm talking not. to. I hope not. Because that I would just be I giving away the th state th secret. There's, there's a trade yeah. secret. We're going to take peppers, let them go for a while, and the onions. Thank you for moving that stuff. Let this go for a while. What was the biggest success of, of, in economic development? The biggest success? You know, we had some really good you know, stories that don't get told, but I think the biggest success is moving unemployment from 10 down to 6.1 mm, okay, this past yeah, month. Yeah. So it's an overall yeah. process. What are the, the biggest successes in terms of retaining corporate citizens in, to stay in the state? Or to bring the people in? The or first one. In. Yeah, the first one we won was uh, Church and Dwight, which is Arm and Hammer baking soda. Mm -hmm. They've been in Princeton for more than 100 years. And the staff sent me in February. Now we are elected in January. I have a degree in economics sworn from in 30 years ago, sworn right? We were sworn yeah. in January. They sent me to Church and Dwight in February. And they say, it's a Hail Mary pass because they're going to Pennsylvania, but go in. So I went by myself. 
Now, now I, really? have, I have a whole bunch of people that help me do stuff now, but I went by myself to meet Jim Craigie at Church and Dwight in his office. And he says, you know, I can't afford to live here, can't afford to die here, we're out of here. They had, they had to pick the place out where they were moving across the river to Pennsylvania. And uh, I said, just give me six months and let me convince you that things are really getting going to be better in New Jersey. Now, fast forward a couple of years, their new world headquarters is in Mercer right. County. Right. The place that space they were in is now an R&D development center, and their manufacturing facility in Lakewood is taking on water instead of losing water. I would, so. I would call that a success. Yeah. Let's throw these in, too. Let's dump the pasta in the water. Let's throw the uh, zucchini and the squash in here. Get as much of this in as it'll fit. Let that cook for a while. It smells good. Yeah, we're starting to get the, uh, the proper aroma. But what about co other companies that, that were on the verge of leaving and we, we kept them? I like my favorite one. Because yeah. I don't know whether you know, I give my cell phone number out to everyone. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard I mean, that. And I do that for this reason. The governor said, you're in charge of red tape. And I went to my very first chamber of commerce, and I said, give, you know, send me an email. And then I started to give out my email address. Now, you know my email address is lieutenant.governor at gov, 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 Right, right, right. Spell lieutenant. L-I-E-U. Exactly. Yeah. So I got about halfway through that yeah, one. I said, right. ah, the heck with that. Take my cell phone cell number. Phone. And I gave him my cell phone number. The staff in the back of the room was having a heart attack. But everybody in the room was writing down my cell phone number. And the good news is that not too long after that, I got a phone call from a guy by the name of Tom Dahl, who works at a tiny little company called Subaru. Little place, and, little place. Yeah, a little yeah, tiny little company. And, and literally on the phone on a Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoons, all right, maybe he wasn't screaming, but let's just say it was a loud conversation. Can't afford to live here. Can't afford to die here. I'm out of here. And I, he described for me what the problem was. And I told him, I said, look, I can't fix it today. It's Sunday. But tomorrow morning I can walk a hall, across the hall to the treasurer and see if we can't fix it. Six months later, Subaru put their new LEED certified yes, distribution yes, center in Florence, and now they've committed to building their new world headquarters in Campton. So one cell phone call. I also saw your name in connection with uh, uh, base retention. You know, the bases in New Jersey represent about 75,000 jobs. Yes, yes. So it's a part of my portfolio to keep those jobs and, here and bolster those and jobs. And we took a huge hit in your home county with, with Fort Monmouth. We yeah. did. Now, we're rebuilding Fort Monmouth. We yeah. have a lot of options, a lot of fun things going on there now. I think it's going to come back, but not in the defense no, not area. not the same way. So our goal now is to defend our bases, if you will, fortify them against the next round if there is ever another round. Let's move to the final ingredients here. Let's throw the peas in. They're only going to take a couple of minutes. Let's throw the mushrooms in. And my favorite. And your favorite, the garlic. Yeah. Sorry about that, but your husband would like it. <laughs> and the tomatoes. All right, let's pepper and salt this to taste. I like a lot of pepper. The salt brings the flavor out. So does the garlic. Garlic, as I said to you, 6,000 years old. You can't, you can't do without it. Keeps vampires away. Why don't you take some of the, some of the nutmeg in there? Just grate it right in. Keeps the vampires away. I'm not touching that. I'm just yeah. ignoring that vampire. Okay, I, I noticed that. That's good. Right. That's good. You know what we get to do? We get to taste. Let's see what's done. We get to taste? Sure I like that do. part of it. Sure we do. I'm just going to use mine. Of course. Let's see if they're done. Mm. Oh, yeah. The lovely good. thing about vegetables, they're done at different stages. I mean, Jersey I like them a little bit al dente. Vegetables. Jersey fresh vegetables. Very good. <laughs> if you would take the basil and just pull the leaves off, we're going to use it for garnish instead of, instead okay. of uh, 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 parsley. Okay. I'm going to dump the water. over here and we're going to take all the lovely New Jersey grown mm, that's vegetables. That's it. Now you're getting it. Why don't you toss that 
Give us the basil. Let's squeeze a lemon into it. I am going to grate some Pecorino Romano cheese into it and some Parmesan. Eccola. Beautiful. Eccola. Let's serve ourselves some of this and dig in because, and then, then we can resume our conversation, but I want to see how this worked out. I'll this is looking good. very nice. It smells nice. That's it? No. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm Italian. A little broccoli? A come little on, broccoli. broccoli. Okay, yeah. we got to do this ah, okay, go. with the spoon. Ah, there's colorful too. Yeah, we want, there you go. There you go. Try it, let me know. Mm. The basil. Yeah, the basil that's a really nice garnish. With just a few little pieces of leaves like that, oh, it would have the such aroma, a fresh... Oh, aroma goes everywhere. Mm. That's good. You know, you said very early in our conversation that you had no background in economic development, you were not a business person. You've taken to this like a duck to water. Oh, you're this is, you're this enjoying is, this. This is great fun. You're it's having a, too much fun. It's like being a litigator. It's a fight. It's a it's a struggle. Oh, it's an argument. Fun. It's uh it's making the pitch and convincing the jury in that case a company to stay in New Jersey and grow in New Jersey, and it's also clearing the way for that company to come to New Jersey and see what New Jersey's all about. Um, it's a f it's a fun story to tell. You know, we have a a lot of assets here. Oh, you know, we do. educated oh, we workforce. Do. Perfectly located, you can get to 130 million consumers on one tank of gas. That's three trillion dollars worth of um, disposable sure. income. We live in a state where there are so many entertaining things. I don't think anybody appreciates that about New Jersey. Uh, I mean, I certainly do. I don't think many people appreciate that about New Jersey. Well, we've got a little bit of everything. There's a reason why when we do like a big thing, like a bio international, where we're trying to attract bio companies to New Jersey, we, we take with us the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. Uh -huh. And we show people okay. a different okay. kind of New Jersey. They didn't expect a quartet. Mm -hmm. um, from New Jersey. Of they course. have a vision of New Jersey that we are trying to change, and we do it one event at a time. If you had in your career as prosecutor, elected official, economic developer, if you had one do-over, if you had one thing you could take back and start over again, what would it be? Well, I know what I would do differently. There's one, one thing I did when I entered public politics. I was trying to decide whether I would run for county sheriff. I, I didn't ask my husband first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could see why you'd want to do that, that as a That didn't go over very well. Well, it was on the front page of the Asbury Park Press, above the crease, that I was going to run. The paper comes to the house. I'm having breakfast with my husband. I see it on the front page, and I said, honey, I think there's something you should know quickly. And I hand him the newspaper. <laughs> it was a huge mistake because it's a joint effort. You can't yeah, go into no, politics. It was a huge mistake. That. One I will never make again, and one I wish I could take back okay. to this day. That's fair. That's yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. One final question, and I ask everybody this: What's next? What's next for Kim Guadagna? You're gonna you will have served eight years as the first lieutenant governor. Um, is there a political future? Are you going to go off and make a lot of money? Or are you going to? What are you going to do? Well, you know, we have two years left to figure that out. And the one thing I've learned from the governor is don't make a decision until you have to. Uh, so I'm not going to. I have a lot of work left to do here. I've traveled up and down the state. I think I've put, the last I checked, 500,000 miles on your Suburban. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I say right. yours because the right. taxpayers pay for it. Right. And I want to keep doing that because I think that the hands-on touch with these businesses or keeping them here? I, I will tell you, I think that there are those who believe that this has been a great boon to you if you ever want to run statewide. You've been able to go everywhere in the state and, and, and been spared the nonsense in, in Trenton. Of course, nonsense is basically what goes on in Trenton. Uh, you said and, it, I did. Yeah, I, I certainly <laughs> did. I make my living talking about that nonsense. And some people think that that'd be a great advantage because you've had the advantage of eight years in office and, and not the disadvantages, but I'm not going to ask you to announce anything right here. That's good, because you know if you were going to announce something right here that all sorts of rules and regulations oh, well, every, kick everything in. Everything kicks no, in, no, of course. No. Of course of two course. more years, it's way too early to start getting to worry about okay. now. John Farmer, the former attorney general, sure. used to say, I'm only focused on the job I have today. And I think that was great advice. Stick, stick to what you know, stick to doing your job, and the rest will all fall into place later on. 
One last thing, my, I have a, uh, my, my wonderful Aunt Josephine died this year at the age of 101. Uh, she was the matriarch of the family and fed everyone for 80 years. She would say, you know, we talk a lot around here, but now the food's on the table. So manje estata zit, which means shut up and eat. So let's <laughs> shut up and eat. Excellent. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. This is delicious. Mm. Cheers. Thank you. Funding for Pasta and Politics with Nick Acachella, provided by Gibbons PC, with 220 attorneys in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. O'Toole, Fernandez, Weiner, Van Lu, LLC, Attorneys at Law. NJM Insurance Group, grown in the Garden State, and proudly serving New Jersey's businesses and citizens for more than 100 years. Fairview Insurance Agency. A family-owned and operated insurance agency with locations in Verona and Cherry Hill. And by CarePoint Health with Bayonne Medical Center, Hoboken University Medical Center, and Christ Hospital. A fully integrated health system of physician practices and neighborhood health centers.